KC's Audio Vault. Moogie-san. May 6th, 2008. Yeah, my name is Moogie-san. What's your name? My name is Casey. Oh, hi. How did you get uh, ho- hooked up on the uh, Queens of the Stone Age tour? We have a mutual friend called Robbie Fraser. He gave Josh a CD, and that's how that got started. Now we're a big, happy family. <laughs> yeah, you're getting along on the road? Uh, we don't see much of them. Uh, spend some time with them, and they're fantastic guys. Their crew also is the coolest crew I've ever met. Why is that? Because they're how like usually when you're a support act, you're just a dog, you know. But these guys, they treat us like kings, you know. They they let us, you know, do whatever, and they're helping us out with the backline and just, you know, really, really friendly. But usually, supporting act is something that's more in the way than anything helpful. Is it uh, difficult being on the road in North America you with the family back home in Iceland? Oh yeah, it's uh, we all have family in, my, in the crew and some kids, uh, but you know there's a software called Skype. We get get on Skype and see the kids on on the video kind of internet. So that helps out. It's like a miracle compared to a few years ago when we didn't have Skype. But you know, at the same time, this is what we love to do. You know, like being a sailor. I guess you have a little bit of experience in that field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be a sailor. It's really similar, actually, because, uh, like, on the bus, it's just like a boat, you know. It's the same kind of man smell, farting and toilet smell and uh, sweat. And, you know, it's a male environment, so it's, it's just like being on a boat. When was the last time you were on a boat? In 2001. I spent the time, but I was mostly from, like... Uh, Ninety-five, I spent, I think, five months on a factory trawler. Had two days in shore. So that was tough, tough stuff. And then uh, I did, like, small, small fishing boats as well. And how did you get into doing that for a living? Um, in Iceland, our, our biggest export is caught fish. He used to be well paid because it was a lot of work. When I was 14, I, I went on, on a small ship. For two months, and I was able to uh, buy myself a um, guitar, an amp, 100 CDs, and still have money for for booze and fun for a whole winter. So it was a good way to get money fast. But nowadays, it, it isn't that, that good, because the price went down. Do you still have family members that are in fishing? Not that many, actually. I've got a couple of uncles, and my, my wife's family is partly still fishing. We live in a small village in the, in the northwest part of Iceland, in the West Fjords. There's only like 100 people in our village. And there are lots of sailors there. And it's funny, in my village, that every third man has lost two fingers on, on the sea. So we were uh, hand-making the Moogie Boogie album in my hometown. It was <laughs> They were surprisingly good doing it with only like seven fingers. So your debut, you pretty much did everything yourself, even hand-stitching, but you had help from uh, people in the town as well? I had a few family members coming over for weekends and stuff when I did the first one. Well, uh, I spent two months, it's like 12 to 16 hours a day, hand-stitching everyone, uh, 13,000. For this one, uh, we did 10,000 for Iceland, and that's all sold up, and then uh, we did 20,000 with the whole town. Uh, we had a few nights like with uh, different kind of groups, like the old folks, old ladies. You know, we had coffee with them and cakes, and did a couple of like 600,000 CDs or something. And then, uh, you know, the kids came a couple of evenings, and <clears throat> the whole whole town pitched in and helped out. That seems a little bit different than musicians in North America. <laughs> yeah, well, I figured you know it's uh, uh, I want it to be really special because I think this is. You know, my last opportunity to do an album, because the format, it's changing. So I want it to be really special. And You mean just going into digital? Yeah. So you figure this will be the last why yeah. handheld album? Yeah, that was the idea. To do an album that, that, would, that would sound like it was a best-of album. Because I love best-of albums, because they're so schizophrenic. They're spanning 10 years or something of somebody's career. Like David Bowie or... 
Led Zeppelin or something, you know, it's so schizophrenic, and I, and I, and I love that element, so I, I figured I'll, I'll do the last album like it was a best of album, but nobody had ever heard it. So you really think you're not going to make an, another one? I'll probably make one, you know, it'll be available on CD, but it wouldn't, you know, it's changing so fast now, finally. It's like when you had vinyl, people were thinking in sides, A and B sides. It's like 15 minutes and 15 minutes, and then the CD, which was a 60-minute format. And now, I, I, I'm not sure of the market show, how, how, many, how many albums they're selling uh, online. And myself, I buy everything online now, because it's so convenient. And, you know, you can even go on my website and buy my stuff directly from me. And you get a <clears throat> CD mailed over right away, and, but you get the uh, download while you're waiting with artwork and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think, I'm not sure if I'll do a proper album, because the format, download format is getting big, big enough. Do you get uh, kind of tired of being introduced as a Icelandic rock artist, always, you know, prefacing what country you're from? No, it's great, because there's a, I feel I'm really privileged to be part of that stamp, because uh, it's gotten me in the past, it's gotten me gigs and stuff, just just the reputation of Icelandic music, you know, people would, in Europe, like, book me, you know, without hearing my music, they would just, you know, let's get that Icelandic artist, you know, he must be crazy or something, and that actually helped me a lot, because of Björk, Sigurov's Moom, because cause whatever you know, because of their reputation. It helps my circus. You mentioned the album seems schizophrenic. You feel solid? You feel you're two feet on the ground? Or are you a bit of a crazy Icelander? Yeah, a mix of the two, you know. it's. Uh, I feel like for this album particularly, you know, I felt every song should be recorded in, in a state of emergency. So, like, we did so many takes. We were three, three years doing this album. We recorded the material again and again until we were, like, playing it like it was old, with eyes closed. The take we're using is usually just... It has a lot of mistakes in it, but it's the take where we felt there was something there. Uh, so there, that's a bit, you know, then you then you got to let yourself loose, you know, connect with the monkey inside and, uh, you know, be a bit of an animal... But yeah, I have to be grounded because I've got two kids. Is it uh, be monkey all the time? No, you got to balance the monkey with the, with the dad. Is that is that difficult? Do you find, uh, you know, you're in the midst of writing a song and then you've got babies to feed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you have to. Yeah, I've got a three year old and one year old, and uh, actually, it made a good kind of change for me because that meant I have to wake up in the morning like seven o'clock. It's actually given me more discipline. And discipline is really good if you want to be productive. I think it actually has helped me, you know, because then, then I wake up seven, I take the kids to their school. Then, you know, I have to work from eight to four o'clock, get the kids, and uh, then if I need to mo- work more, I have to talk to the grandpa or grandma to come over and sort things out, make dinner if I need to do long, long sessions. But to sit there eight hours a day just with guitar, you know, that's really productive. The song, uh, Jesus is a Good Name to Moan, where was the uh, inspiration for that one? Uh, I was touring in Europe. I'd been touring for, I think this is in 2005. <clears throat> I was in Denmark. I don't know, I've been touring three or four weeks or something. It's getting really, really horny, you know, missing the wife. And uh, and I figured, that I, ha- I had this old theory that I did years ago, uh, that uh, God or whoever controls everything put a curse on womankind because um, Jesus' mom didn't didn't have orgasm when she, uh, you know, the, the baby Jesus was just planted in her. And because she didn't get orgasm, there, there was put a curse on all womankind. They had to moan God or Jesus when they were coming. And, you know, I, I remember that theory and touring in Denmark just kind of all fitted together, you know, just made a song based on that, being horny and, uh, and that theory. That's quite a theory. <laughs> 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 well, I, yeah, I, I, I appreciate uh, getting you on the phone. By the way, whereabouts are you today? We just 
stop to have a burger. We're on the way to Regina from Saskatoon to, I think, think it's pronounced. It sounds like vagina, but we spelled Regina. Yeah, you're, you're saying it correctly. Yeah. Well, I'm very much <laughs> looking forward to, uh, to seeing Moogie Sun tomorrow at the Queens of the Stone Age show. Okay, cool. Thanks again. Uh, thank you very much for calling, sir. All the interviews you want on iTunes and at Power97.com. Casey's Audio Vault. Casey Norman is Power97's music director and can be heard every weekday from 2 till 6 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Power97 is Winnipeg's best rock.